Welcome, young, old, all in between, and those that don't categorise themselves as age. Welcome to the Pom and Let Dog off-season show. Thank you very much for your questions. For it to be the Pom and Let Dog show, obviously based on my accent, I am Pom, and as always, joined by Mr. Let Dog, who's beard, well, moustache, he's almost resembling the Batman symbol. Uh, yes, so it's Movember time again. I've been doing it for 10 years now. Uh, if yeah. you want to donate, check out my socials. I'm sure there's a link. I've been on strict instructions for the photos. I'm doing. I'm in a wedding party on Saturday. I've been strict instructions. Do not look like a child in the wedding photo. So the mo has stayed on for the moment, and we're trying to. We're just messing with it. Well, I was trying to imitate some Shanghai Noon characters today. The Batman symbol's an option, and then it'll come off on Saturday night, and I'll look like a child on next week's stream. It'll be great. I I actually think uh, just quietly, and I'm going to put that out there to everyone in the chat but if those who want to donate uh november let dog is probably one of the few people in the world that doesn't annoy me even though in my dms i tell him he does um good day to dion um says lou faz james chills we've got a real action-packed show so a lot of you sent in messages asking questions so you are driving it um a few Fremantle fans obviously wanted to talk about the signing so the first guy through the rank, nine o'clock this morning, the AFL allowed signatures. Oscar McDonald was linked with Fremantle when me and Let Dog did the first one of these shows. He finally makes his way officially. Um, this was his year this year in 2023 for Werribee, 16.8 touches, 8.1 marks, decent TPI score as well for a key defender. And the need score, me and Let Dog said that they wanted a key position player. Oscar fits the bill, doesn't he? He's basically a a taller Joel Hamlin, dare I say it? Yeah, perfect player for that. By the way, shout out to Damo. I'm wearing the uh, mailbag, the mailbag shirt today. Check out the podcast. It's back. Damo's running it. We love him. He's our favorite Frio man. Oscar McDonald is like the perfect player to go into that Fremantle side for what they need. Obviously, and you can put this asterisk on any of the delisted free agents pretty much, but there's health, a history of, of health issues, 86 games across, uh, what's that, eight or nine years, which isn't amazing. But, Pom, he played 20 games last year, or this year, this season, in the uh, reserves or the, the second-tier comp, and he was solid. And he's going to go in, and I think he's probably more than depth at Frio. I think he's probably in that starting lineup. And we saw a couple of years ago at the Blues, we sort of played him as a forward, um, played him in a few different positions, but he still had capacity to impact games. And I think that's exciting. It should be exciting for free metal fans. I'm going to be controversial. I would take him over Sam Durden, to be honest, because Sam yeah. Durden's similar injury list. Um Dr. Doof, mate, you never annoy me, mate. It takes a lot. I've got two toddlers. Well, two toddlers. They're eight and seven now. Mate, my, my patience is astronomical, and you are nowhere near tipping it. He did. He was a Williamstown boy. There's a few Carlton players at Williamstown. Cam Paulson was their club captain, but I did see Williamstown in the flash a couple of games last year, and Oscar really stood out. Obviously, it's VFL, so it is the level below, but... Fair play to him. The talk is he's got a new fitness regime as well. He's had a lot of freedom, probably not being in an AFL system. He looks super fit, and I agree with you. I actually think he's a walk-up start for round one. Yeah, at his best, I've just pulled up his career numbers when he was at Melbourne, sort of that 15-16 possession a game mark, five or six marks a game, a couple of tackles. Like He could be really solid. For the Blues, he never got it, got there, just the five games, and I think two of them he was sub. Well, I think didn't he come on as a sub and kick three goals in a quarter for the Blues, which or something like that, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, uh, two goals for the Blues, I think it was. Uh, but it, it was he's a, dark, a very mate, it was a dark period. A lot of people have played full forward for my football club. Mickey Gibbons, Cam <laughs> Pol- Ed Kerno, John May, like there Fuck was a few it. weeks this year when Charlie Curdo was kicking to Jesse Motlop or Matt Owies one out in the goal square. So it, it has been rough at times. But no, I quite like this as a, as a freebie, as a pickup. If he's worked on his fitness, 
great you beauty i think he at worst provides you solid depth and at best provides you probably that second or third tall defender to that can play if healthy he can, he can play senior footy so yeah love love this for Fremantle. I've got to say, shout out to the Flagmantle podcast, good mates of mine uh, and this channel. They actually did that graphic, so I stole the Oscar McDonald. Um, if you are on Tinder or Bumble or you're newly single, maybe get them lads to do your profile picture because fuck me, Oscar McDonald. I, I want a good. fucking piece. I mean, it, it actually i saw this photo get tweeted out it actually made me miss him i was like Fuck, maybe we should maybe we should have bought him back jesus i would look like an oscar winner says spot on um yeah I, I, they are doing my editing i'm gonna be honest but the next deal that went through is um samuel naismith 31 years old this guy feels like he's been around forever forever sam naismith if it, me and Let Dog do um, a lot of fantasy football together, and I feel like this guy has always been that player that is delisted at the end of the season by everyone. <laughs> and then think maybe this is the year, but 14 games last year in the VFL um, for Port Melbourne. Um, he's a ruckman, recently delisted, 14 disposals, staggering 37 hitouts. 7.08 EPI, which is incredible. Um, and definitely Richmond needed that backup rock losing solder. Sam Naismith, probably, he's one of them players that, he's very talented, isn't he? But kind of like Oscar McDonald, when he gets that continuity, an injury occurs, doesn't it? And it seems to have been that way for like a decade. Yeah, so he's been on a 30 games in, I think it's nine years. I'm trying to work out the maths. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, nine years, 30 games, hell of a lot of years with zero games. The last time he played, 2020, he was actually a super coach lock that year at about $100,000 and uh, played two games and then we didn't see him again. At senior level in the past, I guess this is a break, Kate, break glass in case of emergency pick this doesn't have it have any longevity behind it the likelihood of him playing senior footy based on his injury history pretty low but the upside when he has got on the park i'm looking at his career averages 25 hit outs about 28 hit outs if you take out his rookie year three tackles he so he can impact in the ruck he's relatively one dimensional but as we said they desperately needed to back up ruck on that list and if fit He's your man, and he could come in, and you know what he's going to do. He's kind of like a – if Todd Goldstein had bones made of glass, he's kind of like a Todd Goldstein in that he could be 104 years old. He's still going to get 30 hit-outs in a game at senior level. Yeah, I, I like this. I mean, Richmond heavily linked, are uh, heavily linked in the draft with a gentleman called Will Green, which I was quite surprised about, but the powers that be – suggest Richmond are sniffing at a rock. If that's true, which I don't necessarily feel like it is, because they have got Samson there, which people forget. Like, Samson's a bubba. Um, it would make sense, though. I mean, like you say, Naismith, like, if you get an injury, heaven forbid, to Nan Curvis, if Sam, this is the if, if Sam Naismith is fit, like, you trust him to come in and do a job, don't you? You do. You just probably don't want him to do it for too long um they've got well, that Marte. Long, i'm just looking through their list they got nank who always misses games they get samson samson ryan who i quite like uh despite one saying he's the worst player in the afl i quite <laughs> i look quite like what he's developing into so i think this is sort of your third string backup and i think who've they got Marte kalina is that his name or has he been delisted yeah. anyway you can't imagine that he's going to be playing football I, I like to call him Mate Kalina because I feel like yeah, it's I, like the most Australian name in the world. Yeah, mate. Well, he's from his origin on uh, Footy Wire is Hawaii, so I don't know how. I got nothing. I don't know. Don't know anything about him, but his name's Mate, and he's from Hawaii. Mate, 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 mate. mate I love it. Mate. And the other one, um, my old mate Lou is in the chat um, somewhere. I did see it, Lou. Um, I've lost it. Oh, here we are. When is Fantasia? So, I mean, my prediction was 9.45 today. <coughs> However, 
I went back and saw that I may have been a little bit like my honeymoon night, a little bit too eager and a little bit too premature. Um, <laughs> because looking at the rumours, Oscar McDonald was linked with Frio five days before Arazio. Naismith was two. And knowing the AFL like I do, it is basically home and away without the cute Greek server in the restaurant, basically. That is basically what AFL is, which would mean that 9.45 tomorrow, Arazio's through the door. But they've got some quotes from Vossi. I don't know how they did it, but I did see um, one of the journalists ran a report in the Herald Sun that had a quote of Vossi about Arazio signing. So... That would suggest to me that it's all done. We're just waiting to find out officially. But here he is, last year, back-end form. And I do implore you, if you're a Carlton fan, um, and also a Fremantle fan and an, a, a Sam Naismith Richmond fan, back-end form of all these guys is brilliant. And their highlights are available, full games, on the AFL website. If you actually click and go VFL on the fixtures and click a game, you'll see it. Now, if you go to sandful.com.au, you can see all the games. Back end, particularly the final, last three games of the year in the finals, Arazio was a standout for them. And you can see here, just under 11 touches, 2.2 goals a game, 7.05 TPI score, which is phenomenal for a small forward. And remember, the Sandful is probably the closest we have in terms of pace to the AFL. And this is a 5 out of 5 need score, because I think Carlton need a mature age player, right, who's been there and done it, who's a small forward who potentially can tear a game up. And because the two other kids we got, Dirds and Motlock, wet behind the ears, they need some guidance. Oh, he's mechanical. He's still a baby in my eyes, even though he's mid-20s, because he's not played the game from birth. I like Horazio. I really like this deal. I really like it. I didn't when I first heard about it. <laughs> I had but to convert that like dog. I've taken some time and and like I understood my issue was not really with the the my issue was with his health. I I understood the process of getting a mature age forward in. He's probably the best one that was available. I understand all that. I wasn't super happy. I've sat on it for a couple of days now. I've come around, Pom. I get it. You know, he, as we, as you, it rings through my head. Is he going to be better than pick seventy in the draft? Probably, definitely. Is he going to provide some experience in our forward line? At worst, he's going to be a guy that can is evidently very good clubman, and at best, he's playing best twenty-two footy for us and kicking goals. Um, the question mark for me is the four games over the last two years, ninety-nine games over ten years, less than ten goals, ten games a year, but. You look at his goals, and he's had a couple of years where he's averaged 1.9, 1.9, which, if you look back through our uh, last 10 years of forwards, is pretty unheard of for the sort of guys that we have on the list. So I've come around. I've I've sat with it for a bit, and uh, I fully accept it, and I hope he goes really well for the Blues. I fully accept it. It's... Like I'm not as excited about this as I was when Matty Wright got signed as a delisted free agent. I'll tell you that much. It, 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 it's almost like we've had to twist Let Dog's arm. It's like a fucking breakup, mate. It's like, it's like, it's like you come well, out I'm not gonna, and Like I said, Pop, I, I didn't like him before. I, I now have to convince myself to like him because he's changed his shirt. So. Well, I mean, apologies to all the Italian um, descendants out there because I did do some research and it is Fantasia. It is. So uh, I have been saying it wrong. Fantasia. I can't get out of the habit because I just feel like it sounds better. I wouldn't be one to tell him his name is pronounced wrong, but I just think Fantasia is better. So it's Pom to see is what we're going to call him from now on. I do like Arazi. I think it's a great get. Um, yeah, embrace it, embrace it. I agree with, I, I, I agree with Big Oscar here. It just shows you as well because we're going to come onto this in a bit more in depth. State League football that his back end form has probably given Cout and Hope Arazio. Mm. Same with Oscar, two real solid years for Williamstown. Arazio, there was talk that people were pissed off 
that he wasn't in the seniors with his form in the sandful. Hopefully, his body's good. Because I reckon if Carlton can get 20 games out of him, wow. He, 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 in my opinion, as a player, everyone's fit. He starts round one. I think um, one of the other things that you pointed out or that was highlighted in the talks is that two other clubs wanted him, right? So Port wanted him to stay in GWS, wanted to rookie list him. That says to me that he's probably done enough to earn a spot on on a list, obviously, um, and that we're able to come in and, and offer him two years at the back of the back end of our list. I think, yeah, I've come around completely and come round one. I don't know what number he's going to wear. I'll probably have it on the back of my the back of my shirt. I reckon number four. I haven't actually looked at what's available, but Lockie O'Brien's number is is up for grabs, isn't it? I also thought Elijah could have four. Because his brother's 14. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But... I would never work with my brother, and I certainly wouldn't wear a, a shirt that's similar to his. But I'm built Austra- different. I don't think you're Australian, like dog, because yeah, everyone has to be. always tell me that's a common thing. What do you mean? He should be out. He should, court, should be able to play with your brother. <laughs> um, Fantasia sounds like it does. Yeah, that's why I like saying Fantasia because it reminds me of um, what was that movie? Fantasia. Fantasia. It yeah, was, wasn't Fantasia it? and Fantasia 2000. They weren't Fantasia and Fantasia 2000. Yeah, I, I liked it. Well, State League. So the, this question came in quite a bit on Instagram. I haven't got my phone with me, so I can't pick on you. But there's three of you who asked these questions to varying degrees. So thank you very much for that. I'll I, I'll work out uh, an apology for uh, not remembering who you were. Um, but there's a few State League boys who have been invited. So, interesting enough, uh, the bottom three on your screen, Sam Closey, Matas Elnor, and Bailey van der Heuvel. Uh, there you are. There's my Europeanness. I can I can say a bit of Dutch slash South African. Um, they were actually invited to the draft. And the top two, Sean Manor and uh, Kai de Glass, um, they have been heavily linked with training on um, with the option of being picked up a bit later on in the preseason or maybe the rookie. So I thought, let's take a look at these and showcase them. So this guy here, if you watch the VFL Grand Final, stood out like a sore thumb, really. He was he, he, he looked like some of the best in the league. It was like a proper Grand Final Lee Matthews-esque performance. 21 games for Weza, Werribee. 24.9 touches, 3.9 marks, 5.6 tackles and 1.9 goals. Um, playing anywhere across the half-forward line, pinch hitting in the midfield. 26 years old. Looks like Braden Maynard. Um, <laughs> he's very physical, very, very slight of foot. Um, huge talk. He's going to North. This is one of them picks, isn't it? If you're like North Melbourne, Hawthorne, bottom four sides, even Fremantle, maybe this is where you look with some of your later picks. Yeah, I think so. The the issue with these sort of guys for me is, and it's not their fault, they always get picked and their strengths are ball winning and, and contested pill. And then they, because they're not used to the standard, they go, maybe this is just my Carlton fan speaking, they go and get sat in a forward pocket for a year they can't make the most of it, and then they get sent on their way. Shout out to you, Mickey Gibbons. Um, and it seems to happen a lot, but I really hope Manor can find a team. I actually, North is interesting. I actually, if I was him, probably, I mean, you take any opportunity you get, but North's probably not one I'd want to go to because, I mean, we've said this before, I, I quite like their midfield. Um, the one benefit is that Clarko there, he does like to play those Hard the hard the hard nuts and uh, he tends to to run a bit of a mature player through that midfield regardless of their talent. I, A.K. Liam Shields last year, so there's opportunities from there. But yeah, I definitely think if you're a one of those bottom four clubs, this is where you try and strike gold. Uh, Frio did it a little bit with uh, uh, Wagner or Wagner last year. I don't know if the W spelt with Wagner. It. Um, so we, we have seen this in the past and yeah, his, his grand final game was massive and you'd expect him to be on a list at least as an SSP signing next year. Mate, I mean, he's done all he can. I mean, what makes me sad is 
like you say, DeLuca, Mickey Gibbons. DeLuca's I mean, I think what helps him is Michael Barlow, his coach, he's now at North. So that would I help, mean, yeah. So Barlow knows. Do you know what I mean? He knows what he's getting with this guy. So I'd imagine it. I f- you know, you know what Matt Gandolfo as always nails my thought process. I actually thought I see I could see him being exactly what Sam Mitchell wants. Like I could see Sam Mitchell looking at him and going, you know what, well, this guy is kind of probably what we're lacking. Someone who can pinch it on the ball, but then go forward, working with Gunston, one of the best at that half forward role. Uh, it makes sense, but I do think Barlow will be the push comes to shove type guy. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good shout. And I've got um, some people in at North Melbourne, and I'm going to send some texts after this and see if I can squeeze out some juice. Well, I mean, the other one is, and this guy here, everyone remembers him. And this is a guy that, you know what, he, he's he's been linked a few times in the preseason drafts um, as this fella, his old Kai de Glass. Now, you, you may remember him in uh, Melbourne colours, but another guy in uh, Werribee who has really gone strength to strength and um, slotting up forward has been a real habitual thing for Kai this year when they needed a goal. And you can see 1.2 goals for a guy that has played about 70% key defender, 24.4 touches, 6.8 marks, 2.4 tackles. Really, though, from where we saw him three, four years ago to now, this time in the VFL, being the senior guy, being the main man, he's really shone. And it's no surprise to me that Naismith and Kai, since getting the arm tap, lower arm tap, mm-hmm. improved their output. Could that be scientific? Who knows? But Mate. Kai's one of these guys that has been linked with a few clubs as an option to train on should the list of bots not be filled. And again, I think Fremantle would probably be the favourites and North, but they've already picked someone up, Toby Pink for one, and Oscar today. Yeah, look, and I think, by the way, the tattoos, if they're Star Wars or Doctor Who, that you'll get extra extra toughness and skill out of that. He He's an interesting one. He's similar to sort of how if we're drawing it back to Carlton, how Carlton wanted to use Oscar McDonald when he was on the list as a bit of a swing man. But DeClaise is probably a bit more uh, proficient up forward and a bit than than Oscar McDonald was. He's been in the system before. I always like that with a player, particularly when they've been in the system, they go back to VFL and they they improve. They don't just coast. I think that's, that's a really good strength of his and that shows uh, maturity. It shows to, to drive and desire. And yeah, North Melbourne's an interesting one. I'm not across their list spots because they've got 17 extra list spots, but they sometimes they don't and sometimes they do. I'm not really across who they've got, but um, anyone who needs a tall, who can play in defence and potentially, potentially pinch it up forward should be looking at this guy. And I, I prefer, I actually quite like this this sort of throw at the stumps over a, an injury-related throw at the stumps. We've seen with like an OMAC or whatever. Just because... Yes, it's hard to get over injury, but that's something that you get over and it can reoccur. Whereas when you've been cut and you're gutted and you go back and you will yourself back into the, the scope of these teams, I think that just shows a little bit of extra oomph. And I, I like that in a player. Mate, I like it. Faz, I'd rather recruit pubic lice than the class. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if that was, if we're in German, the class is how I'd describe that comment. It is class. Um, well done, Faz. <laughs> I agree with you. I mean, my two things with Kai is, like you were saying about North, they've got the extra list spots. I think they probably only need one or two type players. Do you know what I mean? One or two of these type players, and I think they could maybe back it up. Kai makes a good point. Sydney are a team that we've talked about for ages. Are looking at key positions. Some people have linked them with key position players in the draft. Um which doesn't really cure the now. McCartan, like you say, do you know what I mean? You saw what happened last year to Sydney. They were flying. And we talked about this when we did our needs analysis. Mm. Uh, once their injuries started, it kind of did affect them. Um, and my other issue with Kai is he looks like everyone's first girlfriend's dad. do not he? <laughs> I, all yeah. my mates and the girls they knocked around with, including my first girlfriend, their dad looked very similar to Kai. Probably not as tall. Well, 
like he could bash you yeah at least that's that's how i felt whenever i met anyone there's a few clubs honestly he could fit in at like even uh a geelong i doubt that <laughs> happens but like you if we're just looking at their positional sort of needs there's a there's a couple of clubs that could use him well dr doofenshmirtz big ben he did mention he doesn't like drafting ruckman key position players which i can see there's a good point because i think kai is case in point right played continual games as a feature not as a developer player and you've seen the improve improvements you've seen the improvements um faz wants him at wallen um, bit young for Geelong, says, says probably. <laughs> Very but, good. But you only get older. But talking about Geelong, the next guy that they've been linked with is Sam Clusey. Now, if you've been watching Werribee, he really stands out, particularly on that half-back line. Um, shrewd little user of the ball as well. Takes the game on. 21 games ever present in the Werribee side. 5.6 marks. 2.8 of them intercept marks. Tackles 2.2. Doesn't get up the ground too much, but you can really see the way that he's played in VFL, that he looks more like an AFL-listed player in VFL than your general run-of-the-mill VFL player. And Geelong, Geelong have been uh, heavily linked with him. Yeah, I think you can pretty much lock that one in. I think they've been trying to stash him a little bit where they can, as they always do, I believe, uh, is it Brad? Is his brother is also at Geelong, who they they took as a little bit of a bargain? I could that could be wrong. They might just have the same last name, but I believe that's correct. Yeah, I think I think he'll be at Geelong next year. I think you can pretty much lock that one in right now. Well, mate, Ted, you were talking about Ted Clusey. Ted, what did I say? I can't remember Brad. what you said, but <laughs> Brad. So same last letter. Um, but no, I, I really like this. But I, I really like this acquisition. And do you know what I mean? You're spot on. Geelong do hide. It. Every club has the traits. Like Kai talks about Sydney. They don't often draft these key position players. They cultivate them. Geelong don't. Re- Geelong don't do early picks, do they? They they they, they <laughs> cultivate some guy they've manufactured in the VFL, and they've basically. St- I, I reckon Geelong are one of them teams. You know where. Uh, at these meetings where they, they might talk too loudly, I reckon creating fake rumours to mm-hmm. put people off. Do you know what I mean? Ah, oh, yeah, Sam's a great player, but Jesus, him on the sauce, big issue. Just putting him off, do you know what I mean? But I agree, worst kept secret in football, he's going to sign with them, they're going to pick him up, but he was the first State League player invited to the Cup Combine, which is genuinely an indication from doing this for the last five, six years someone's offered them a deal and uh yeah it looks like yeah. geelong are uh, that team no i think i think you can lock that one in good old geelong you know we always talk about how the afl is always too nice geelong despite this year's off-season performance they've always been sort of that rough and tumble they'll hide a guy in div seven they'll do it They'll go and get Jack Bowes and pick six and then also just go oh we're just going to extend Jack Bowes and not even play him like Geelong are a little bit ruthless. Hey, they're good at what they do. You know, they're good at what they do. And uh, the other two guys, this guy I've talked about quite a lot on this show. I was really hot on him in the mid-season draft. Um, he ended up leaving the Bull Ants last year, went to Richmond. This year, playing for a better a- AFL-listed side as Richmond. Uh, 12.8 touches, 3.8 marks, 1.5 tackles. Really showcased his... T- his talent. Now, where at the Bull Ants, he was the main event. At Richmond, he kind of took that back fiddle to the AFL listed players that slotted across halfback. But you really did see his ability ability in the air. And he's, he's a very good defender with a great turn of pace. Fremantle are heavily linked with him. And uh, I really like Mutaz. And I think he's, uh, he's actually stiff not to be on a list already. I think a few clubs who massively fucked up that mid-season draft that year hmm. may regret this because I feel like there's something in this kid. He's a solid player. I think there's been a few mistakes in the uh, mid-season drafts and the SSPs, yep. but anyway. Uh, yeah, Pom, I don't know any, anything about this man, so I'm just going to have to take your word for it that he's he's good and should be on an AFL list. 
Mate, well, I mean, for those long-time subs, I mentioned him in the mid-season draft uh, a few years back. I'm a big fan of Mutaz, and I'm a firm believer that if you're going to buy a defender, you look at the shit VFL clubs. Because mm. I always feel, when you look at the top AFL VFL clubs, it's kind of a little bit of a fagazi, because generally their midfield is stacked with talent, their forward lines AFL. When you, like at the Bull Ants, like at that time, they were literally like... It, I went to watch a Bull Ants game and I was scared to go across the boundary because I thought they might throw me on the field. They were that yeah, desperate yeah, for players. Yeah. I, I think it is. Would he be ahead of Dom? Um, I think he would be, yeah, purely because Mutaz has been through every age group possible. Um, and he's 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 a different type of player, though. He's not as tall and gangly and key position-y as Dom is, I feel like Mutaz is that kind of guy that can break a game open in the mode of like CJ, Aaliyah, Aaliyah, like them type of players playing that maybe taller third. Or if you want to slot him across half back and take the game on. I really like Mutaz. And I think at Fremantle, he's probably the pl- perfect place because I feel like there's a chance to play. Yeah. Look, I mean, we're going to keep saying them because they have the spots and they don't have the pick. So these are the sort of guys they're going to have to have uh, a throw at the stumps on. And so far, OMAC have loved. Hey, yeah. And the last guy is big Bailey van der Hoovel. He um, sounds like he should be playing field hockey or something in Holland. Well, could be, could well be. But anyone who comes from Ballarat is big, strong and tough, let's be honest. And... uh He's he's a marauding little key position player as well. He's he's playing for Geelong. There is talk he's another player that Geelong are linked with. And he does remind me of a Lockie Henderson type key defender. No nonsense. Like he's not exciting or anything like that. He just does his job. He bores it out. And when you've got players like Sam DeConing to play off him and stuff, who are a little bit more exciting and creative looking at like Melbourne's mantra of having a tall wall, two talented players alongside him would make sense, but he's been sensational. Anything in the air, he catches um, some of the Geelong VFL games as well. If you go back and watch them, like this guy was like going up for marks and pulling down the international space station, but a proper one-on-one blocker, old school, miserable, cantankerous key defender. And, one that's ready, AFL round one. I just, I was absolutely thrown by the Lockie Henderson reference. That is, um, that is something else. That, I love that. Is that good or bad? I don't know. <laughs> um, shout out, by the way, and I might be wrong, but I've just got a donation to the Movember page from Sandy Falcone, who I believe is a, a viewer of our content. So thank you, Sandy. They are indeed. Amazing, hey, very hey, generous, hey, hey. much appreciated. Thank you. Hey, see, look, Pomia should change his name to Virgil, Virgil van Dyke. That's clever. That That, that is clever. But this was a big question. So this came that you, you wanted to fire me and let dog up because it's an AFL rule that you know me and let dog will get pissed off with. So the big driver of this question was uh, Leonard Puglia. Puglia, I've probably massacred that. I've had an attempt. I don't have Terry here to save me. So I'm sorry, but thank you very much. But the second chance players. So Jeremy Sharp, Bryn Tickle are, are linked with, they've been offered deals or will be picked up in some kind of mythical way. Um, James Borlassi was the big player that um, we were asked about. But the guys with the asterisks, this is where we're going to have a rant have been promised they will be picked up by their current AFL clubs on a rookie deal, which begs me to say, why are we a professional sports club that delists players to then pick them up? Yeah. <laughs> I remember when the rookie list meant something and it was used <laughs> for, I feel like Kane Corns, it was used for, for alternate pathways. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why that's the mechanism we have to use. It's not like, I mean, the only real risk, and I'm putting risk in quotation marks because it's only happened once, is if you delist a player, they can move in between 
then in the draft as a free agent. But to be honest with you, that's not going to happen with these guys. It doesn't make sense that we've got this kind of fake rookie draft that really isn't a rookie draft because it's just it's just automatic selections that seem to get tack on, tacked on to the end of the, uh, the national draft, and it's just player upgrades. None of it makes any sense to me, Pom. None of it makes any sense to me. I agree with Kai. And I mean, we saw a very famous case last a couple of years ago, Hugh Greenwood, delisted by Gold Coast. Um, and if you actually go back and see how that happened, right, it was the coach's wife. <laughs> yeah, it was who overheard a conversation her husband had talking about we could do with a player like Hugh Greenwood. And she was like, oh, he's been delisted. Why can't you just call him? They made a few calls and found out legit they could sign him. Um, there was no rule stopping him. And this begs the question, why do we not... Good day, Christian. Why do we not have a system in place where the category B rookie rule, that used to be a year, and then it was two years, and then it was three years, and now it's just a mutual agreement because it's capped at like 85K. I believe that's going up this year, and it's, it's off up. the books, right? But And it's a mutual agreement, right? So as long as I'm happy to be a cat B and be paid peanuts, I'll stay it, providing I fall under the criteria. Why can't we just have an agreement and say, look, if you are a senior listed player, if you agree to a rookie A deal, bang, done. Like, stop delisting them. Just do it. It's, I don't understand. what I don't understand other than maybe there's like a legal loophole or something similar with the preseason draft in the back that we don't know about. But like, so it doesn't make sense that it's a list spot and it has its own draft. I understand that if the rookie category was a contract category, like in the NBA, you've got your max category, your max, your max extension, your rookie extension, your vet minimum, which is a player who's been in the league for X amount of years and they can earn based on how many years they've been in the league, a set amount of money. That would make sense. If Sam Reed was like, Hey, I'm going to go on a rookie contract you don't need it to list me. I'm just signing a rookie contract that is worth X because I have been on the in the AFL for Y years. That makes perfect sense to me. I understand that as a categorization tool, but as it currently sits, as the need to delist a player to redraft them in a pretend draft that isn't a real draft, it doesn't make any sense. Mate, I agree. And you know, Kai here makes a good point. So this is the elevations program and getting away with it, right? Which I agree with, but... My issue is, and Sam Reed, Ryan Mel says, in my argument here, I would say Sam Reed is a player that might be of interest to a shit club, a bottom four mm -hmm. club, like maybe Fremantle, not picking on them, but they don't have real recognized key forwards apart from Bubbers, really, and average ones. Someone that could come in and help them out. Right, but because he's landlocked now to Sydney, he becomes almost like a NGA guaranteed. Why can't we have the system that we can burn picks to upgrade them, which gets us around the three selections? Why can't we have the same where he stays on the list and we just burn it and go right? Sam Reed is now a category A rookie, fantastic. Okay, Jake Melksham is now a category A rookie, fantastic, and just keep them here because I just feel. That if that was a top club, if that was wasn't Gold Coast and Hugh Greenwood had been snug by him, if that hmm. was say a Collingwood if it was Carlton, no or a Carlton, Carlton, that loophole would be closed. Now that loophole hmm. would be closed, and we would have a happy world where players aren't delisted to be repicked up in a pretend draft two weeks time. I mean. It, it's like being shocked at the Royal Rumble results, the rookie draft, because it's <laughs> preordained. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I guess, yeah. I guess the 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 mechanic that they used to have that they don't have was that uh I can't remember what it was called, but it was the veteran list or whatever, yeah. where if you were had been playing for ten years or whatever, you your salary didn't count in the salary cap, and you could have one or two two of those guys on your list. They got rid of that. And I feel like that was something to do with have Cola and Sydney fucked that up for us somehow. But, like, again, that was a salary designation, which made sense. You didn't have to delist it. It's just Sam Reed is now on our designated veteran. 
um, cap salary. His salary, only half of it counts towards the salary cap. He doesn't need to be delisted. It just is an over complexity of a, or what should be a really simple, really simple system. Do you know what I do, right? And here's my idea. Lists of 44, right? Lists of 44. Category B, you cap it at actually two, not the current yes. AFL rule where it is two, but it can be three, right? And sometimes it's one and sometimes, and, yeah. and sometimes it's even more. If you're Collingwood a couple of years ago, you've got special dispensation to go to four. So it's currently at the three mark with permission from the AFL, providing that they have come through these official categories of not being AFL footballers from birth. So that's like your Irish players, your American players, right? So let's say we've got, we have that. So the lists are actually 47, but we say, right, three players can be total projects that aren't on your books capped at 85K, right? These can be guys from immigrant immigration or from America, Ireland, wherever you found them, total punts and blind darkness picks, just hopefuls. Then let's just say anyone below 300K can go on what's called a development contract and have them as actual development contracts. Because what annoys me about the rookie, eh? Sam Reed, old as piss. Jake Melsham, right? He was like arguably their best player in some of them games. He's taking an 18-year-old's job. So Melbourne should be in a situation, either he's a senior listed player or we lose him and we get an 18-year-old in. This is taking jobs. Like, we've got a shallow draft pool already. But Lachlan McNeil has played thousands of games and showed himself to be quite versatile. Taylor Jaray is older than time itself. Why are we <laughs> letting... This should be an 18-year-old getting a job, right? So, yeah. fuck the salary cap. Either pick a kid, trade him or delist him and let someone else use him. Yeah, so I'm just looking through the requirements for Cat B rookies. Has not registered an AFL Australian football competition for three years um, prior. Is an international player. They're not an Australian citizen. They haven't lived in Australia for a while. Is a former New South Wales scholarship player with that specific club. Is a former international scholarship player with that specific club. It's a rookie zone selection for clubs based in New South Wales, Queensland, or is an Irish player, but you can only have one category B Irish player on your list. It's just, yeah, I, I agree. I think we can, I don't necessarily, like the AFL in their minds will be like, well, this isn't a problem because it doesn't affect anyone. But it's just about continuity, uh, applying logic to a situation, making it really clear. If you have played AFL for a long period of time, you're not a you're not a you're not a rookie. Just put them on the main list, change the number of the main list. I don't really give a shit if you do that. Let the rookie list be what it is, what it was supposed to be, and that was a pathway opportunity for guys like and ironically Alex Murkov's not on our rookie list, but uh, like Alex Murkov should have been a cat B rookie because he's a volleyballer. He never played AF, he never played Australian footy, but unfortunately. Logic has uh, failed here. Well, mate, and to to go to Lennon's point, John James Belassi is is rumored to be got a deal. Now, other clubs are looking at him, and he asked, "Would anyone else look?" For me, if James enters that, you've got to take him. The kid's got some talent. Even Jeremy Sharp, Jeremy Sharp shocks me because two years ago. He really burst out of the blocks, right? And wingmen are rare, decent ones. I thought the redevelopment at half forward has been shocking. Mm. You're, they've got what? Currently, Adelaide, if with the rookie draft, if let's say everyone has it, they're around pick 11, right? I would say already Eagles could do with a James Balassi, North Melbourne, Hawthorne, Richmond. St. Kilda, potentially. Do you know what I mean? And, and Port Adelaide. Yeah. Like, Port Adelaide would use it. Like, I think there's a lot of teams here. And I I don't mind them asterisk ones because I think they're all toffee footballers. But mm -hmm. the first three, Bryn Tico, I think, has got a bit of talent. I, I feel like if they start doing this preordained thing, it's unfair because I would say now, them first three names suit the bottom four clubs like that 
agree. I think, um, and the AFL will say, well, you know, technically, if another club wants him, they could sign him as a free agent. But we know the rookie draft and the preseason drafts even worse. They're basically there so that the AFL doesn't get sued for restriction of uh, restriction of trade or whatever when a player wants to play somewhere and they're not allowed to. So it's basically all big cop out, and it's been misconstrued, and it shouldn't upset me, but it does because it isn't logical. Well, people are saying, look, AFR logical next joke. Spot on, Kai. Spot on. Brody McLaughlin. Um, he's a name that we didn't have there. He hasn't been linked to anyone, but VFL, prolific. Bit older, hasn't been linked with anyone. I, I get a feeling that if there is an injury to someone in pre-season, do you chat and let dog? I feel like he's one of them names, you know, like Callum Moore, that out of nowhere gets a train on spot. Yeah, for sure. I think he's a great option. Uh, and, uh, you know, behind the scenes, we've talked about him a lot because I'm obsessed with him. So I think I wouldn't be surprised to see him show up somewhere in the SSP. Uh, the, the thing going against him is historically, if you don't make it as that mid-season or pre-season draftee, you just kind of, for whatever reason, wiped out in terms of your opportunities. But, yeah, I, I think he's a great shout. I, I forgot about this guy as well. Round zero is the rumour of round one. They're going to give it a different name because it's going to be different. But we've gone so. on to this question here. This came in on Instagram. And I'm sorry, I can't forget your name. I've forgotten your name. I haven't got my phone, so I can't check it. But it was a great question. You asked specifically about Sydney. So let's have a look at what Sydney might do. Sydney currently have got Taylor Adams, Brody Grundy, James Jordan and Joel Hamlin through the door. They're ready to go. They've got 12, 45, 55, and 91. Um, obviously, this is going to be interesting because, like, what do they need? You'd probably say that they'd love a, a key PD, key position player, but I genuinely don't think that they'll take one. No, I don't in think the they draft. Will. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I don't think they'll take one in the draft. I feel like they, they may go best available, but they have got. And it needs to be talked about. Caden Cleary coming up. Now, he had a fantastic back end of the junior year. He's made it into the All-Australian juniors as well. Um, as close as a player that I've seen, and I mean this, I don't want anyone to quote me and go, Pom's telling me he's going to be this player. But you all ask for likenesses. If I had to attribute him to someone, he's got a lot of, He's got a lot of, I, I'm going to say, it, he's got a lot of Bontepelli about him, right? He's big, he's strong, he's tough. He's got a bit of pace. He, he looks ready-made. He's a big, big, big boy. I think it's an interesting one because the rumours are GWS are going to be dickheads and take him early. There's talk about how are they going to be able to match the bid. Remember, they can go into deficits so of 45 and 55 We've, we've covered this a lot, so you should be well-versed, but that's what, f about 550 in points, right, which should cover a bid from 26 onwards, which I I don't think, I, I don't think anyone will take it. I know the rumours are he's going to go in the top 20. I don't see it. I really don't. I think the earliest bid that will come in for him, in my opinion, would be GWS's 34, which will probably go up to 30 with matches and deads, dead zones. But, Leg Dog, what do you think they're going to be targeting with pick 12? Pick 12's on the board. Yeah. Who are we going to bring in? Um, it's a good question. It's Sydney have addressed a lot of the needs. I agree that uh, they probably need either a KPD or a KPF to develop, but I don't think they're going to draft one. I think that's – someone said earlier in the chat that that's not their bag, and, and I agree. So it's probably one of the – they've probably got a luxury of, of having best available or potentially, you know, not even using pick 12 and turning it into somewhere else. But I'd look across their lines, Pom. Um, like there's 25 players <laughs> that could be playing for them every single week. I mean, maybe if there's a decent key position forward available that they want to develop. But again, I think they just trade for that later on. So I think they're in a good position where they don't actually have any needs. They addressed it with, they needed an inside mid, a Ruckman and a key defender. And they did that in the off season. So there's not much pressure for them. Uh, someone asked if, 
James Jordan uh, was ahead of Angus Sheldrick. I love Angus Sheldrick. I'm big on him, but I imagine given the moves they've moved, they've they pulled in the offseason, they're probably envisioning envisaging Jordan to be ahead of him just because of the, the win now factor, which it looks like they're trying to have a punt this year. Ideally, they both play though early uh, with a couple of players out with injury, including what's his name? Who's the captain who fucked around and broke his spine? Cal Mills. Callum Mills, yes. Thank you. It's all right. Yeah, I mean, that's the report. Um, Christian, spot on. GWS going to pay him back. Um, Collingwood, Richmond. You see, I just don't think Collingwood would. Collingwood, I don't think have got... I, I just don't think Graham Wright isn't the type of list manager that does that, right? He, he He's very noble. Richmond, I could see doing it, but I don't... So, so the question was, what will they do with their first pick? Which is a great question, and it, you know it, what, it's Pom? a real what? Uh, I was just saying, is there any general defenders available with that first pick? I reckon that's that that's with Lloyd and Blakey and a couple of guys getting older. They, I reckon that might be a, a place where they look to. Um, I reckon Ryan Hardeman youth. would probably be their best bet if they were looking at that. I mean. Cal Toomey's got them taking Will Green. I don't see them taking a Rook that early. No. Do you know no. what I mean? It, do, I it doesn't see... make sense. It's not what they do. It's not what they do. Like, I, I, Will Green is very good, but I just don't see it. Do you know what I mean? I just don't see them looking at what they've got, taking it. I also don't see them taking, because the best key position defenders are around there. Do you know what I mean? There's some fantastic key defenders around there, like, Ollie Murphy is an absolute dynamite jet. Do you know what mm. I mean? He's a real solid player. But I, I just feel I, I'm with you. I know um you've got the Tazzy Boy Kai that you really like as well. Um Ari Seanmaker. I think that's a little bit early for Sean Maker at 12. I could see what Let Dog says. I could see them shifting down. And this is why I said in my preview last week: be careful how that top 10 goes. Because everyone's mm. looking at Geelong's pick. I actually think there's going to be a few shocks because I think people are drafting on talent and I don't think some of the teams in the top 10 are. I could see players like Nate Caddy slide out of 10 and I would put my life on it that Carlton would come in. 12, um, Nate Caddy's yeah. there. Carlton come Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Here, take 21, future first and my left testicle. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I could see Carlton coming in and going, right, let's do it, because I feel like that's it. But I think Sydney are in a very strong position. I think Caden clearly is very good, and he isn't talked about. And thank you very much for the compliment, John. Spot on. No one's talking about the other guys. There is some very good players in this draft, and people need to just remember that. But up next is St. Kilda. Palm, but let's, uh, let's speed through these a little bit. <laughs> okay. St. Kilda up next. Um, Liam Henry, Paddy Dow. They've got a decent draft hand, 13 and 21, which... We suspect them to use, and they may take a punt they have announced today, which is usually a good indication that they're going to take one of their academy players because they did a big article on him. But 13 and 21, um, what do we think here St. Kilda are going to be looking for? Like, what do you reckon that they'll be looking for type of players? Yeah, it's uh, they're another interesting one where – they, they don't have any glaring holes. They might want to, if at pick 13, there's, there's a guy like Murphy or a really solid key defender there, they probably jump on one of them. Wilkie and Howard getting, you know, they're not going to be around forever. And then your backups like what, Josh Battle and Zane Cordy, you probably want to inject some high and tell them there if you can. Uh, other than that, like St. Kilda's an interesting, they don't have any glaring holes, but there's plenty of, room for improvement in all of their lines i would say except maybe the inside mids with jack Steele and stuff um but yeah for me it'd be sort of key defender if there's one available we haven't seen isaac keeler play yet we were pretty high on him last year um yeah i i don't know so for me key defender is probably the number one play type of player i'd be targeting around that pick for them Lucky jack they don't have to use all their picks now um usually around that 50 mark Everyone starts passing. And oh, JMZ on. has a good point. Who knows with Sauce? So actually, having said that, 
He will have identified two injured players that haven't played all year. He will trade pick 13 down to pick 20. He'll draft two injured players, and then they'll be delisted in two years' time. Okay, well, my mate, Cooper Simpson, will be a St. Kilda player then. But um, I, I, I think they need someone forward of the ground. I, I feel like Dan Butler is too inconsistent. I feel like they need Oh, they did lose finisher. Gresham as well, didn't they? Yeah, I feel like they need a finisher. So I, I've got a feeling that one of these picks will be Harry Di Matea, 100%. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I still had um, Gresham on my list for them. So Butler, Higgins, and then there's kind of question marks over Hotton, who didn't, who was injured last year. Philip, who's going into his second year, but I still think, I still think he's more of a hybrid player. Um, yeah, that's a good shout, Bomb. It's a good shout. Hey, yeah, do you know what I mean? Would they go for Caddy? I don't think they'd go for Caddy. No, I think they need some like creative zip up that forward line. I, I think they'll back in members who has announced that he'll be ready. Um, the last two to finish with. So this came in quite a bit free man. And I don't know if it's because everyone liked me saying that they were a Z rating. <laughs> um, Oscar McDonald. I mean, that is depressing, isn't it? When you ins are Oscar McDonald and they're your picks to come. Um, they've got a lot of work to do, haven't they? They've got to get, really creative and they've got to really hope I'm right that outside of 15 you've got a lot of squad players because the WA talent is woeful this year really and I I can see these they're gonna have to nail this yeah they do I, I'm not sure where they go like <sighs> They got Sarong, Brayshaw, and Young, who are all very good. But then after that, they've got like Will Brody, who they didn't play. They got Nat Fife, who's always injured. They got Erasmus, who they took pretty high a couple of years ago, who's been a sub and barely played. Like just like Nathan, maybe a winger if there's a winger available. They've got no one really in that in that space unless they go for Sharp from Gold Coast, which is, I think is the rumors. But they potentially probably need to look at an outside player. Um, Nathan O'Driscoll can't even get into the just can't even get close to the best 22. He was another sort of higher up pick for them. It's yeah, there's a reason we were pretty sad about them <laughs> in the uh, in the off season bomb. Well, says us, is that all they've done? Like, if you actually put it in perspective, Schultz Henry Hamlin dies, McDonald comes in, so yeah, for and this the year, they, they obviously got in a couple of late first for next year, but yeah. But, like, looking at it just player-wise, I always think, going into the draft, we've got to look at it player-wise. Yeah, I think they're in a fortunate position, though, because it's really best available, isn't it? Yeah, it's best that, available. Yeah. Like, best option, I mean, it makes it easy. Um, Christian says, Fremantle's 2023 20, trade period should be judged next year. I see where they picks fall if they can bring... Yeah. Agree, but when we've been doing our measurements or our reviews, it's been based on next year and obviously there's an asterisk that yes you have to look back later on so yeah i agree christian it's going to be interesting brayshaw sarong i could see clubs sniffing around them and to answer your question oh, Lucky answer Jack, that. i can answer it here so carlton so carlton if the rumors are true which it does look like by the report and based on a two-year deal carlton are going to offer mr alazio a senior spot. That would mean Carlton would have 33 senior players needing to hit 36 to meet the requirements, right? Carlton need to get a rookie A off their deal. So why they pass is 96 would promote a player. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that's Pom Cotter. That's 34. 22 and 28 makes 36, meaning 70 and 78, they haven't got the list spots. They're already at capacity. <laughs> At that point of oh, Matt Gandolfo, um, sorry to cut you off. Matt G Gandolfo says they can get lob for free for a week. He did do, uh, if you if our spies are correct, he did do a, a medical over there. So that is a potential option for them. It is, yeah. So that that's why they'd pass, um, because they're either going to put rookie deals or promote other people, or yep. they're going to leave or the grab spot a, open. Yeah, Some go to the Prince, open. SSP, whatever, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. but this is Carlton, so let's talk, because a few of you asked what we're doing. Chat, what are we looking for? So what would you like? 22 and 28, what type of players do you want at Carlton Football Club? 
Uh, I want to trade those picks and get Nate Caddy into our team. Um, again, we've sort of we're a team that lacks a lot of needs. I guess twenty two and twenty eight. You're ideally looking at sort of your Jackson Bins level of player, and by that I mean a guy who's really good at, at uh, seconds and potentially becomes a squad player moving forward. Obviously, technically twenty two is a first round pick, so. Um, you're hoping for upside, but like we've seen guys like Matthew Allison, who's never played, go late in the first. We saw Phil was technically first. He basically never played. So 22 is still a little bit of a gamble. Um, I don't know. I don't think, Pom, we talked about it the other day. We talked about the idea that potentially there's a, do you look at drafting a Ruckman if there's a one available? Maybe. Do you look at a, a young developing key forward because you don't think Harry Lemmy is going to be anything? Maybe. We're pretty set behind the ball. We're pretty set in the midfield and and we're pretty set, uh, you know, in the half forward line slash small forward area now that Orazio is your, your next in. So what do you think? Is there any names sticking out to you? Uh, well, I mean, I've got my dream acquisition. So like, I've I've been hot, and it's no secret. Harry Di Matteo and Colston Folstrup, I've been hot on, but I don't think they'll be there. So for me, I think it's quite simple. It's the best player available at 22, because I feel like we're either going to get a halfback flanker who might be able to be the third toll should we need it, or go up the ground, them kind of options, or it's going to be a forward who can go into the midfield, which I feel like Carlton won't care about. So it'd be... The best available. So if that's a Lawal or a Chujiaf, I'll, I'll, I'll froth. And I've got a sneaky feeling Nick Austin will favour NGAs. He's got a history of, of looking at them because he knows the hard work has been done. And then 28, yeah. I agree with Wayne Daniel, and we've covered this. If Mitch Edwards is there, you have to take him. Even though I'm not 100% sold and having five Ruckman, I don't know what Murkoff is going to do. And that was a question that came in. We don't know. We suspect he's all right. But Mitch Edwards, in my opinion, is 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 the 80. I've got him ranked on talent 17th in the in in the this crop. He's that good. Yeah. If he's there at 28, have to take him. Have and to take him. Potentially will be. Ruckman tend to slip in, in drafts and tolls tend to slip in drafts. There was guys I had sort of top 30, top 40 last year who didn't even get drafted. So, you know, what do I know? But, uh, yeah, I like it. And I'm with you that Alex Murkov, I think, regardless of his health next year, he probably isn't on the list at the end of next year. So you need to start planning ahead. So, um, and Nick Austin will know that. Yeah, and I agree with Matt. They're slow developers and we've got the perfect time with Murkoff, with Mark, with Mark Pittner and TDK to do it. Trophy 17 is the aim, but chat, thank you very much. Um, loads coming this week from me personally. I've got my rating system, so you'll see everyone from 1 to 110. We've got the next installment of your pocket profiles that you've been enjoying. And then next week, me, Let Dog, and special guests will be doing a live mock draft where we're the list managers. So, you can enjoy that. We enjoyed that last week, but we'll see you next week. Hopefully we've got some more blue baggers to talk about, but thank you very much. See us.